So in a previous video, we looked at monitoring disk space usage. Now let's take a look at the other two major factors when it comes to system slowdowns, uh, major resources that we want to monitor, and that's going to be our memory and our CPU usage. So we're going to start out with memory, and the command to monitor memory is free. So free and this is going to show us our memory availability and our swap file availability and so we're going to mem swap we're going to have total used free shared buffer cache and available now like the df command this is reported in bytes so we can simplify it using free dash m which will report it in megabytes or dash G, which will record it in gigabytes. Gigabytes, honestly, probably isn't usable. Um, megabytes for most people is gonna be most useful and a thousand megabytes is gonna be a gigabyte. So if we look at this, let's look at our swap file first. So I have a 3.9 gigabyte swap file. And of that, I'm using two megabytes, okay. That means I'm not using my swap file very much at all. That's a good thing. So I still have like 3.933 uh, gigabytes free in my swap file. We don't want to use the swap file. If we're using swap file, it's slowing our system down. We use a swap file to extend the reach of physical memory. So if we... Uh, uh, if we're using that swap file a lot, it means our system is slowing down because we're going to have to go to swap file, which is stored on our hard drive, which is really going to slow our system down. So we really want to make sure that we're not doing that. If you start doing that, you either need to offload some tasks and you know, get rid of things that are using up memory, or you need to add more memory. Now, with that being said, let's look at our memory itself. So I have my physical memory. I have 3.9 gigabytes. I'm using 3.1. It says I only have 123 megabytes free. Now, that's actually not true. What I actually have free is going to be over here on the side where it says available. So what this does is that 123 megabytes is not used. But a lot of my other memory is being used with things being pre-cached. So pre-cached getting ready to be uh, written or read ahead. So the actual memory I have available to my system is 477 megabytes, not 123 megabytes. So if you see that free, don't panic too much over that. Look for what's actually available and that's gonna be a much better gauge. So I have, what, four gigs, I have a gig, so I have an eighth of my memory that's totally untouched at the moment. And actually, this is going to be a little bit odd because I have this on a Hyper-V virtual machine that is um, dynamically managing memory. So I'm actually, it, these numbers are going to be a little flaky. According to Hyper-V, my machine's actually using just over one gigabyte. But I gave it four gigabytes to work with, and that's where these numbers are coming from. Okay, so... That allows me to monitor my memory. Now, my processor time, this is gonna be interesting because in Windows, we're used to going to Task Manager or Resource Monitor or something like that and looking at our processor usage in real time. That does kind of create an issue for us though because we'll see our processor spike to 100% and then settle back down. And that's not always a really good gauge of over time how much our processor is actually being used. I like the way Linux does it really well. And that is we do it using processor load averages. So I'm going to issue the command uptime. And this is going to tell me how long my system has been up. So I, how many users and then uh, once I get past, you know, the time it started, the uh, how long it's uh, been up, uh, how many users I've got, then I have my load averages. And those load averages, you see, I've got three numbers there. And it's for the last one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes. So as I look at that, you know, I'm going to see my load average is basically zero, which means, by the way, my server is incredibly bored. I'm not really having it do anything. 
Now, those load averages have to do with how many things are being processed at any given moment for the last one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes. So we can see immediately this is going to give us a better perspective of how our processor is being used rather than just sitting there watching the numbers bounce around in real time. We do have a way we can look at something similar in uh, Linux, and we'll look at that in a little bit. So let's talk about this idea of load average. What's a good load average? So if you think about it in terms of queues, um, the analogy that I really liked was the analogy of a uh, checkout. Uh, checkout lines in grocery store. If you have eight checkout lines open and you have four customers, then you're still going to have four checkout lines. Four, uh, four checkers are going to be busy serving customers. The other four are going to be unused. In this, that would represent as a load average of four. We're serving an average of four customers per minute. Now, in this case, a load average of four would be great because we still have, we have eight checkers. We're only serving four customers. We still have, you know, four more customers that we can serve immediately. If I only had one checkout, uh, one checker and a load average of four, that would mean I'd have four customers trying to be served by one checker. I'm going to see backups. I'm going to see slowdowns. This becomes a problem. So the way you interpret load average is relative to the number of processor cores that you have. If your load average is below the number of processor cores, then you're good. If your load average is higher than the number of processor cores that you have, you're going to start seeing slowdowns. So that's one of the things you're going to want to look for. Now, this is very convenient, but it doesn't show me which processes are using processor time. And we looked at that in a previous command, right, where we could use the PS command and, you know, PS dash AUX. And that's going to show me processor usage and memory usage for all of my different processes. And that's great, but it doesn't give me that constantly, I mean, this is a snapshot in time. It doesn't give me that constantly updating. Let me see what's always going on on my system, the same way I have with Task Manager, Resource Monitor, and Windows. Now, we do have a similar tool, however, in Linux, and the command is called htop. Now, if you do not have it on your system, you can do sudo uh, apt install htop. Now, let's talk about what we've got here. So up here, I have CPU, memory, and swap usage. And these are going to be those little gauges that I'm used to looking at. So CPU time, and I'm going to have one of these per CPU core. And I'm sitting on a single core system because, you know, it's a virtual machine. So I have one of them there. My memory usage is showing me I'm using 3.1 out of 3.8 gigs. That's not bad. The swap file usage, really, really low. Okay, all of these things are great. Now, over here, I've also got number of tasks, how many are running, and then I've still got my load average, which is great. Again, that's that one, five, and 15 minutes. And then I have my uptime. And then here, I have all of my processes. So I got the process ID, the user that it belongs to, the priority, the niceness. And notice, and I can't move my mouse over, but as you go across here, you're going to see where you uh, have CPU percent. That's what we're currently sorted on. We're sorted by that CPU percent. Now, if I hit, S wasn't the one that I wanted. Uh, let me escape because I'm done with that. Okay, this gives me everything I can scroll down and look at specific things down here at the bottom. Notice I can adjust my niceness or kill a process. And then F10 gets me out. So one other thing I want to show you, a couple of things I want to show you. Number one is going to be the tree view. So it's very common that processes spawn other processes. And I don't always see that here. But if I hit my F5 and look at my tree view, now I can see where processes uh, spawn other processes. So here's my login. And from that login, we opened up bash and from bash, we opened up htop. 
So that's a process tree. Here is another process that spawned these processes. So now I can see how my processes are related to each other. And I can see what's going to happen if I try to kill a process. If I try to kill this process, then all of these sub processes would be killed as well. All right, to get back, um, let me go back to F5, which will take me back to my sorted view. Now you'll also see here I have processes for specific users. If I hit my U, it's going to give me, it'll let me filter by specific uses. So I just want to see David's processes. And now it's going to show me just processes for that particular user. U to go back and let me look at processes owned by root you to go back and let me look at processes for all users. Okay, so now I can kind of hop around a little bit and filter this. Now I'm sorted by CPU at the moment. If I hit like my greater than or less than key, it's gonna allow me to change my sort. So let me sort by person of memory usage. And now that's gonna be on top and I'll see which processes are using most of my memory. Hit that greater than less than sign again, either one, go to my percent CPU, and now I'm sorted by CPU usage. Sort by niceness, and now I see one with a niceness of negative one. Everything else has a default niceness, so this would be my highest priority process. Hit it again. I'm going to go back to sorting by percent CPU. All right, so this lets me explore my processes. And this is not exactly real time, but it's pretty close. Notice, by the way, look up here, uh, all the way across, actually over here on this side. Notice my load average has now changed as I've been doing more things. My load average has gone up to 0 0.01, so I am still have a very bored system. So, but you get to see that it's happening. Okay. Um, that was the other thing I wanted to look at. So HTOP gives us the ability to explore our processes and our process usage and gives us the ability to kill, right? So if I'm looking here and I find a process that has just gone nuts and I decided to kill it, then I've got that F9, which will let me try to kill. And I can do a SIG term which is a terminate signal or a SIG kill. Now I haven't, uh, done this. I didn't load this as root. So I'm going to be limited in what I can actually do. I might get away with killing this because, you know, I started it, but I don't want to exit or I don't want to do it yet. But if I was going to send the signal, remember SIG term is terminate nicely. So shut down properly if you can. SIG kill is, I don't care if you do it nice or not, just get it done put that thing down. And that's basically pulling the plug on that operation. All right, I'm going to go back uh, because I don't want to kill it from there. Okay. Now, when I am done exploring all this, and remember, um, we can control Z to background this, and then we can go in work. And anytime we want to come back to it, like we covered in our video on background jobs, we just bring it back to the foreground. Now, it auto updates every two seconds by default. If we want to change our configuration of this, we're going to hit F2 to set up. And in F2, we can set up, notice here, we can set up our meters in our left column, our right column, and we can look at our available meters. We can go to our display options and we can adjust all of our display options. We can whoops, adjust our colors and adjust the columns. These are the columns that we're currently viewing for all of our processes. We can come over and we can add additional columns or here subtract the columns that we want. Notice our options across the bottom, move down, move up, remove, and done. Okay, so using this, we can go through and we can configure how we want HTOP to work for us specifically. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and exit out. And hopefully that gives you an idea of tools that you can use to monitor memory and CPU usage on your system.